Without gratitude, one cannot be made whole. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. On this Thanksgiving Day, we here in, in the, at the Upper Room in Wake County in Raleigh, North Carolina, in America, we join the nations of Australia, Canada, Grenada, Liberia, the Netherlands, the Philippines, St. Lucia, and other nations that have similar observances in giving thanks to the God of the Bible for his goodness, for his kindness, and for his tender mercies. Our minds reflect today on the 90 Native Americans, the 90 Indians, and the 53 pilgrims who gathered in October of 1621 for the first official Thanksgiving service. The pilgrims had been accustomed to a day of thanks being set aside Thanksgiving for victories in war and various things. But in coming over here, they gathered and they had this Thanksgiving service, the first of its kind in 1621 of October. The fourth Thursday in November is the national holiday that is set aside in our nation to give thanks to the God of the Bible and here at Upper Room, we do not give thanks to thanks. We give thanks to the Lord. We don't have faith in faith. You know, you often hear uh, athletes say, we knew if we would just believe, we could win. So the key is to just believe. Well, belief in belief is foolishness. Faith, for it to be faith, for it to work, there has to be an object that is focused on. We have faith in the God of the Bible. We haven't gathered here today, and hopefully you won't gather this afternoon anywhere and give thanks to a force. Give thanks to luck or to chance or to fate. Give thanks to the God of the Bible. Amen. Thanksgiving, it originated as a harvest festival. Thanksgiving has been celebrated on and off since 1789 with a proclamation by George Washington after a request by Congress. Thomas Jefferson didn't observe the Thanksgiving. He um, omitted or chose not to observe the holiday and its celebration was intermittent until President Abraham Lincoln. When Thanksgiving became a holiday in 1863, Lincoln did it. During the American Civil War, Lincoln proclaimed a national day of thanks and praise to our beneficent father, who dwells in the heavens. The holy book that Lincoln had in his hand was the Bible. So one can reasonably deduct that the holy beneficent father that he was referencing was the God of the Bible. To be celebrated on the fourth Thursday in November. Together with Christmas and New Year, Thanksgiving is a part of the broader fall, winter, holiday season in the U.S. And I just want to say this. I pray that you're too wise after today to join in with those who has assigned political correctness to Christmas. 
uh, we say Merry Christmas. Uh, Christians do not celebrate the season. Christians celebrate the birth of Christ. Amen. The birth of Christ. And I, it would be something if just for one year, all Christians would decide that if they're going to say season's greetings or use clever commercials to dance around the word Christmas, because at the root of the word Christmas is the word Christ. The word Christmas literally means Chris is Christmas, Christ's gathering, a gathering in the name of Christ. They're going to dance around it. Wouldn't it be good if we just danced around those stores? Just, just decided just for one year, we're not going to, if you're not going to display, if you got a great big season's greeting sign, we're going we're gonna to keep our money in our pockets, and we'll be back when you hang Merry Christmas. Yeah. One year. One year. They will start hanging banners saying Merry Christmas the following July because it would cripple them. But my point is many things happen in our nation and people get away with things because Christians don't fight anymore. Amen. The criticisms that are heralded at the name of Jesus, how his name is used as a swear word at least four times in most major Hollywood productions, they would never do that to the name Allah. They would never do that to other religions because other religious patrons would um, stop patronizing them. They would march in the street. They would make noise. But it seems to me the, the, the prevailing body language and response to Christians in these last days is that we just roll over and play dead. Um, and uh, it seems like to me in many cases uh, it is the spirit of Laodicea that has um, uh, overtaken us and the fight is gone. But back to this. The Bible says this in Psalms 106 and verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Psalms 105 and 1 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds, deeds among the people. Psalms 104 and verse 4, the B clause says, Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Psalms 95 and verse 2 says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. In fact, in one form or another, between the Hebrew and the Greek, between the Old Testament and the New, the word thanksgiving is mentioned 28 times in the Bible. We're told to give thanks 39 times in the Bible. The word thankful is mentioned four times. What is overwhelmingly clear in scripture is that gratitude is a vital part of our relationship with the Lord. Amen. It is also a key component of our spiritual and mental Makeup. It plays a major role in our psyche. Ingrates are not healthy people. Ingrates are not fun to be around. Gratitude contributes to our over, overall feeling of well-being and, and, uh, and happiness. Grateful people are happy people. Thankful people, people who are appreciative, they have, they are much more positive uh, in their outlook in life and the way they uh, deal with circumstances, situations, than people who are not. Amen. Uh, people who uh, are filled with gratitude are happy. The truth is that every day 
should be a day of thankful reflection and appreciation for all of the wonderful things that the God of the Bible has brought our way. We should be thankful to be in this nation. I know that it's popular now to hate America, to find whatever fault you can find after you get out of your beautiful car and you lay there in your nice bed in your nice home or wonderful apart, apartment and, and you turn and you finally turn off your flat screen television praise the lord and all the indoor plumbing and running water and all of the uh, blessings that you have you had just left eating out at a restaurant and you could sit in any section that you wanted there were no whites only and black only sections and the Lord has blessed you with a good job. Praise the Lord. And you dressed up, and doing good. You got sick. And you didn't have to wait 12 weeks or 21 weeks to see your doctor. But because of uh, being in this country, we have a system where people from other countries, Canada included, when they get sick, they come to America. Of all of the wonderful things about this nation, we become experts in finding fault. And sometimes we have to look hard to find something to be mad about. But we're good at it. And we become experts at being angry. The hip hop culture has taught blacks not to smile. Amen. Even when you buy a Christian CD now, the Christian artist is. It, it, Got a frown on his or her face. We have become expert complainers. We've had to hire teams to get us to praise God. Skilled singers and musicians. I remember when it was just one organ. And maybe one person would lead testimony service. And everybody else fall in. And sometimes the leader couldn't sing. But. Folks still had a testimony. It was not a dry time. People couldn't wait to get theirs in. And the song wasn't as complicated, but they were beautiful. Have you tried Jesus? And somebody would answer, he's all right. And, 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 and the, it was easier to preach because the house was prepped with thankful people. Now you got to preach through a whole lot of levels. We sang sad songs for too long with no joy, too much whining. The music is dead. The house is dead. There's no uh, uh, jovial exuberance. And we're not excited about what God is doing. And somewhere after you have preached uh, about two more days off your lifespan, somebody finally decides to say amen. Preacher told me the other day that uh, that the kind of preaching we do, the doctor told him, said you you are, is equivalent with the stress that it put on your heart, or maybe taking two days off your life. I said, well, I thought about it for a few minutes. I said, well, then I'm leaving early because I'm going to sure keep preaching for as long as the Lord give me strength to do so. But we need to be thankful. Thankful for our past. Thankful for the present. Thankful for the future. In our text, we see what happens when gratitude is a part of the equation. Are you with me today? Also, we see how ingratitude can keep one from receiving God's best for their lives. You want what the Lord has for you. Amen. You want God's best. Praise the Lord. I know we say, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. And that's true. But if you, if you find out that the Lord has something special for you, why not go for it? Am I right? 
Praise the Lord. So we, we, we see what happens, and, and we are told in Scripture that, that, that the God of the Bible, you know, now, I don't want to preach to you and say that if you're, if you're unthankful, the Lord won't bless you because that's not true. The Bible says in Luke 6 and 35, the very last clause, it says, for he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. The truth is, the God of the Bible is kind to everybody. And the context of that particular uh, verse is that we should do good to our enemies and be nice to people who don't even like us and, and uh, treat folk right because our God is good uh, to the, he's kind to the unthankful and to the evil. In our text, we're going to see 10 men. 10 men who were bound together by misery. Ten men bound together by misery, reaching out in a sense of desperate urgency to their last best hope. Jesus had come to town. Actually, Jesus hadn't come to town. He was passing through. Verse 11 says, and it came to pass that as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Jesus was on the border of Galilee and Samaria and was met by a band of ten lepers. We know that the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. Yet in this band, there was at least one Samaritan. Here is an example of a great law in life. A common misfortune had broken down the racial and natural barriers. Oh yeah, it's amazing what misfortune does when everybody has suffered a loss. Fire come through and burn up the whole town. Nobody has time to be divided by race and, uh, and, and, and status and, and stuff like that because everyone has lost everything. Amen. Um, in the common tragedy of their leprosy, they have forgotten that they were Jews and Samaritans and remembered only that they were men in need. Nature teaches this. If a flood floods out an area and there's a little higher ground and if the animals can make it to that higher ground, you can find animals that are natural enemies standing on that little mound of ground getting along. By nature, they would try to kill each other and try to rip each other to shreds. But since water is everywhere, there stands a lion, a tiger, a bear, a lamb, a, a chicken, praise the Lord, a, 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 a kitten, a cat, and a dog. And ain't nobody fighting because they're all trying to live. Now, when, when the water recedes, I suggest that to the, the smaller ones start running. But as long as they are bound together by this common misfortune, they won't fight each other. Our common need for the Lord. Our common need for the more of Christ ought to bind us together. Do I have anybody here today who can say, I need the Lord. I, I need to get closer to him. Wouldn't it be something if everybody on your row wanted to get closer to God? Can you imagine what kind of service we would have if everybody on in your section was desperate for the Lord and nobody was uh, on, the, uh, on the phone watching the game. Somebody else, two, two, two persons down, is, is, is answering all of their texts during the service. These things uh, uh, mess up uh, the atmosphere of the service. And you can't, you, sometimes it's the difference between someone getting healed and someone not getting healed. These ten men were in a, a village on the border of Samaria and Galilee. Jesus walks through there on his way to Jerusalem. 
And as he entered the village, the village is not named, these lepers were standing afar off. Uh, they were obeying the Levitical law. Leviticus 13, 44, 45 through 46 says, And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his ha head, head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, Lame, Lame. He shall cry, Unclean, Unclean. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean, and he shall dwell alone. Outside the camp shall be his, his shall his habitation be. Numbers 5 and 2 says, Command the children of Israel that they put out of the camp every leper and everyone that hath an issue and whosoever is defiled by uh, the dead. So the lepers couldn't come into the camp. We're not told exactly what distance they had to stand, but uh, uh, it is suggested that they had to at least be at least 50 yards or so from any person who did not have that leprosy. So Jesus walks into this village and at least 50 yards or so outside of the village, as Jesus enters into the village, uh, you, you could tell by the writings that the Lord had not gone into the heart of the village yet. He's on the outskirts. These lepers began to, they met him, and they stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices. And look at what they said. They lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They asked, saints. Notice what they didn't ask for. They did not ask for healing. They asked for pity. They did not prescribe or describe how they wanted Jesus' act of pity to be carried out. It could be, give us some money. It could be, we're hungry. It could be, uh, treat us with kindness. They did not say, heal us. But they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They lifted up their voices out of desperation and basically said, Jesus, Master, whatever you can do to help, please help us. If there is anything that you can do, please help me out. My God, the man at the beautiful gate Ask for arms. And Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. Isn't, God, isn't the Lord good? Praise the Lord. They said, help us. Butler says this. He said, the passion in the plea is demonstrated in two ways. First, the debility of their voices. The voice of a person with leprosy is often greatly weakened by leprosy. So lepers couldn't talk loud. Therefore, it was with great effort that these lepers shouted to Christ for help. Their vocal cords had been affected. Their lungs had been affected. They couldn't really talk um, above a whisper. But when they saw Jesus... See, sometimes, see, see, sometimes the difference between getting a blessing and getting delivered and not getting delivered is desire. See, how much effort are you willing to put forth in getting your blessing? Some of you, you let the preacher put more effort in you getting delivered than you put in, uh, in getting uh, deliverance. And when I'm praying for somebody on the altar and I see that they're not really uh, interested very much in getting delivered, I move on to someone else because I'm not going to stand there all day and I'm praying for you and you don't really want it. You're more interested in, in looking cool, making sure your hairdo don't get messed up, making sure you don't fall. Some of us put more effort in standing than we put in getting delivered. But when you really want to get delivered, you'll reach down in yourself and 
and do what you have to do to get God's attention. These men put forth great effort and cried out for help. And the second thing that we noticed was the distance of their voices. They stood afar off because of their uh, afflictions and the restrictions associated with their afflictions. So they had to lift their voices, lift their voices extra loud uh, in order to be heard over the distance. And a wonderful thing happened. The Bible says as they lifted their voices and said what they had to say, they got Jesus's attention. The Bible says, and he heard them. The Bible says they lifted their voices in verse 13. And verse 14 says, and when he saw them. The implication is that they didn't say it just one time. But they kept saying it. And it, I'll tell you something else that's implied is that he did not see them. He was on his way to Jerusalem. They saw him. And they said, I've got to get God's, Jesus' attention. Praise the Lord. So they made some noise. And when they began to cry out, the Bible says, and when Jesus saw them, they got his attention and he looked over at them and notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, be healed. He didn't say, you're free. Oh, he said something that most of us pastors are afraid to say when someone comes to us in need. Elder William Cooper has told the story many times that he came to me one time and he was at the bottom. He, had, he didn't have two pennies to rub together. Uh, his oldest son, Brandon, was stricken. Praise the Lord. And he and his wife were in deep poverty. He met with me and told me of his story. He didn't ask me for a dime. He just talked to me about his situation. And uh, at the end of his talk, I looked at him and, and I told him what God told me to tell him. I said, Cooper, God told me to tell you tithe and offerings. God didn't tell me to reach into my pocket and give him $100. Had he told me, I would have. God didn't tell me to, to write him a check. Had he told me, I would have. But that check wouldn't have lasted but so long. Sometimes when you make a request and you ask God for something that you want, the Lord responds to your request not with an answer to prayer but with a command. He tells you something that you need to do. Yeah, I heard what you said to me, but let me tell you what I want you to do. See, because obedience is in this thing. Songwriter said, trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Oh, he said to that man, he said to them, um, go, show yourselves to the priest. Notice something else he didn't do. He didn't touch them. He, he, he didn't walk over and talk to them. Oh, we leave service sometimes. Pastor didn't lay hands on me. I came to church and nobody reached out and touched me. Sometimes, saints, that's the way the Lord deals with you. That's intentional. Jesus saw them and he didn't even walk over there where they were. You would have thought loving Jesus Sweet Jesus, wonderful Jesus would have ran over there and just grabbed him and said, be here, be here, be here, be here, because he had the power. But no, he didn't even change his direction. He didn't get off the Jerusalem road. He didn't even pause. He just looked over there and said, go, show yourself to the priest. And, uh, and, and he didn't have a long conversation. One statement and went on. Now, everything now is up to them. And, and, and see, let me tell you what they knew. Let me tell you something. Uh, are you praying for me? Let me, let me, tell, you, let me tell you something here. Uh, they had already, at one point, been to the priest. 
Because Leviticus 13 says that if a man has leprosy, it has to be pronounced by the priest that he has leprosy. So they had already been to see the priest. Isn't God good? But, somebody shout but. Uh, Leviticus 14 says when you get healed of leprosy, you got to go back and show yourself to the priest. So what Jesus said to them uh, in essence was, act like you're healed. Act like you're healed. Go do what a healed man would do. I wonder what would happen today if I opened up the floor and let somebody in here act like you've already received what you have up before the Lord. Woo! What would you do if you had it? How would you act if God had already done it? How would you, what would you do if he's healed your body? Would you run? Would you jump? My God, what would you do? Jesus said, go show yourself. Uh-huh, to the priest. And the Bible said, now the ball is in their court. See, healing is a process. Getting blessed is a process. It's a back and forth. You ask God, God responds. You ask God, God tells you what to do. We say what we want, he tells us what he wants. Then at that point, it's on us. See, because one thing you can't do, you cannot uh, pout your way into a healing. You cannot stick out your lip uh, into God doing what you want him to do. You sure can't fold your arms and get what you want from the Lord. If you're going to get what the Lord has for you, you got to do what the Lord said do. Jesus said, go with your sick cells, fear with leprosy. Go and uh, show yourself unto the priest and uh, uh, they started to walk can I get a witness text tells us that after he told them that it says and it came to pass that means that and it came to pass I love the way the Bible is constructed and it came to pass see they didn't start walking right away it came to pass that is in the process of time uh, somebody met with someone said wait a minute is that all we're going to get is that all? Is that all? Go show ourselves to the priest. Show, show him what? Look at us. Man, your nose fell off last night. Uh, leopard number eight, your fingers are gone. Leopard number seven, that dog, get, get that dog off your leg. Because you, you know lepers can't feel anything. Dog chewing on his ankle. Get, get, get away. He, he can't feel a thing. And they, all of the stench of leprosy and uh, the, the isolationism and the, oh, the, the, the helplessness of the situation. But you know what? Somebody said, well, we ain't got nothing to lose. Peter told the Lord, we fished all night. But since you said uh, launch out into the deep, that's your word. We're going to do it. You got to know how to take God at his word. Jesus said, go. Show yourself to the priest. And, uh, and it came to pass that as uh, they went, they started to walk. They started to walk and then they began to feel something. One of the things they felt was feeling coming back. All of a sudden their feet could feel the ground. All of a sudden, when they bumped, uh, bumped each other, they could feel themselves. Man reached up in touch, and his nose was back. <laughs> oh, God, something's happening. And the guy looked at the, one of them, looked at the other and said, man, well, something's going on with you. And the other said, and something's going on with you. And when they began to notice, they noticed that they had on the same old dirty clothes. But when they pulled the, uh, the clothes back, their arms were healed. Their toes were back. The leprosy was gone. Their skin had cleared up. God performed a mighty cleansing miracle. And what a mighty, what a mighty moment that was. How many here have received a blessing from the Lord? How many have received a cleansing? Matter of fact, there are people in here who have received a miracle from the Lord. If God's given you a miracle, now some of us have been blessed to where we didn't need a miracle. 
and not every miracle is a miracle of healing. I've received miracles. I've received near miss. And the only explanation that I can give for that car not hitting me was the Lord gave me a miracle. And some of you received miracles of, of various sorts where God sent an angel and he didn't let the fire burn you, didn't let the car hit you, didn't let, didn't let that disease get on you. While you was out there in the world, didn't let that bullet hit you. The Lord knows how to perform miracles. Have you ever received the blessing from the Lord? Have you ever received the miracle from him? If you have, tell the Lord, thank you. And I heard you that when they, when they got that blessing, now the story, this beautiful story, this beautiful story that at this point that begins to turn dark because only one of them, somebody shout one of them, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, somebody shout one of them the Lord healed all ten of them but one of them when he saw that he was healed turned back I wonder today what category would we be in would we be in the, the nine or the one are you one who know how to show appreciation to the Lord or would you be one of those who just would have kept on walking one of them uh, when he saw that he was healed turned back and with a loud voice notice his behavior he didn't whisper and let me tell you if he could have a loud voice when he had leprosy you ought to have a loud voice now some of us had a loud voice in the club and then you get saved and won't say anything you could dance all night to the devil's music but now that you're saved you won't shout you ought to purpose in your heart, whatever I did out there, I'm going to do twice as much for the Lord who cleaned me up and saved my soul. That one leper, he turned back by himself and with a loud voice began to glorify God. He began to praise Jesus and that ain't all he did. And then he fell down on his face at Jesus' feet. That's a worship posture. He went from praise to worship and from worship to thanksgiving and began to give him thanks. He began to give him thanks. I wonder do I have anybody who would give God a little praise and while you're giving him praise, go from praise to worship and then go from worship to thanksgiving because he's been so good and he's been so kind. Yeah! Yes, Lord! Praise him if you will. Thank him if you will. Worship him if you will. Ah, Lord! Go for yourself. Go for yourself. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for your, your neighbor. But do it as unto the Lord. He's been good to me. The man praised him. He shook off his pride. Fell at Jesus' feet. Began to thank the Lord. Began to worship the Lord. And Jesus, he didn't stop him. He let him worship him. He let him worship him. He let him praise him. And at this point, Jesus, Jesus, Said out loud, where are the nine? Where are the nine? Where's the rest of them? Now you know how Jesus felt about them not praising him. Some of us say, well, I just, I, I show thanks the way I show thanks. But there's a proper way to give thanks. There's a proper response to deeds done. And when the Lord has done something wonderful for you, or when someone else, it ain't got to be God, but when somebody else have done something wonderful for you, something that you know that you couldn't do for yourself, when you get a blessing like that, there is a proper response. There is a proper deme demeanor. There is a way to say thank you. Somebody give the Lord a Shabbat praise. Ah, thank you. Ah, thank you. Ah, 
since we're in flu, flu season, since we're in flu season, I won't ask you to shake your neighbor's hand, but you ought to fist bump your neighbor and say, neighbor, have you properly thanked him for what he's done for you? Ah, neighbor, have you told the Lord, Lord, I thank you for healing my body. Lord, I thank you for saving my soul. Oh, Lord, oh, Jesus, I thank you for where you brought me from. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you. Heal my body. Thank you. Save my soul. Thank you. Brought me out. Thank you. Was there for me when I couldn't do for myself. Let me tell you something. The, the human race, human beings are the only people. We are the species on the planet. It takes human beings the longest to get to the point in life where they can take care of themselves. Dogs grow up and become self-sufficient much quicker than humans. Cats does. Alligators, lions, tigers, bears, wolves, you name it. It doesn't take them 18 years, 17 years before they can take care of themselves. And some of us if our parents would have neglected us for one week, we would have died. Now look at us. We've gotten grown, parents gotten old, and now they're a nuisance. You don't have time to look out for the person who looked out for you. How did you let the devil get in you to cause you to forget how good they've been to you? We're so quick to forget. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Help me to remember what you've done for me, what others have done. God Almighty, what Mama did, what Daddy did. You're not praying for me, but you ought to look back and thank the Lord for what was done in your life. Woo! Jesus said, where are the nine? And he said, now they're not found, they're not one that turned back to give glory to God, but this man. And guess what? He was a stranger. The only one who came back to give praise to the Lord was the Samaritan, the Jews. They were just like most of us today. They walked in a spirit of entitlement. We feel like we deserve everything we get. That spirit of entitlement is that spirit of unthankfulness. And Paul warned that in the last days, among other things, men would be unthankful, unthankful. Some of us believe that we deserve the house we live in the health in our bodies, the cars we drive. We deserve our ministry. We deserve this, that, and the other. But the truth is, we deserve none of these things. God's been good to us, and we need to master the craft of praise. We need to master showing gratitude. Gratitude, gratitude. Somebody just thank him. Somebody praise him. Somebody be grateful. Oh, lift up your voice and give God praise. Give God thanks for what he's done. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now, 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 Jesus. He healed all 
Verse 10. Sent them to see the priests. Now if you, if you, don't pull me down. If you go to Leviticus 14. Going to see the priests was a laborious, time-consuming task that costs money. These men were lepers. Lepers had no job. Lepers had no money. And yet, to be clean, you got to go see the priests, and you got to come and bring a certain number of animals. Scarlet yarn. Hyssop, hallelujah, and you got to go the priests, you can't go in the camp, the priest is going to go outside of the camp to check you out, to see if you've been healed, and after that, you got to have two birds that are clean, cedar wood, a scarlet thorn, a scarlet yarn, and hyssop, and the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in a clay pot and then that the bird be killed in a clay pot or under over running water and then they take the blood from the dead bird and sprinkle it on you and the priest would pronounce you clean but after you were pronounced clean you could enter into the camp but you couldn't go into your tent for seven days so now you gotta stand out there for seven days sleeping on the outside you can't work you can't touch anybody they can't touch you then on the eighth day it's time now to buy two lambs they had to be perfect two lambs they had to be perfect you got to get flour meal oil and participate in another ceremony and you couldn't do any of it until the priest could get to you and if the priest was busy working on other people then you got to stand there and wait until it's your turn and then the priest would take you through another ceremony and if you didn't have money verse 21 said if you be poor and cannot afford it then they ain't gonna do it free then you could buy cheaper material, but you still got to go through the same process before you get pronounced healed and before you could go back to your normal life. That's what Jesus sent every one of them to. They went to the priest, but because one man turned around and showed appreciation, because one man Oh, Jesus, thank you. Because one man said, I want to show my gratitude. Jesus being the priest of priests. Jesus being the king of kings. The Lord of lords. And the lily of the valley. He said to that man, you don't have to go to the priest. He said, go thy way. Your faith has done it all. You already hold your faith provided every sacrifice that you needed. Your gratitude has put you eight, nine, 10, 20 days ahead of the rest of them because you showed me praise. You showed gratitude. I challenge somebody on this Thanksgiving day to give God praise to show gratitude for what the Lord has done for you. You'll go further, you'll move faster, you'll climb higher, you'll be blessed quicker if you just show gratitude. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Him, sister. Ought to be ten more out there with him. Thank you. I'm grateful.
grateful. I'm grateful to Jesus. I'm grateful for my mama, my daddy, for those who helped me along the way, who was there for me when I couldn't do for myself. You were there when I really needed somebody. You were there when I needed a blessing. You were there. I want to thank God for all that he's done. One writer say that there was one disease that was deadlier than leprosy. One disease. And that was the disease that Jesus did not get a chance to cure them of. And that was the disease of ingratitude. I know a whole lot of people, I know a whole lot of people who are not sick in their bodies, but they're still messed up. I know a whole bunch of people who have no physical ailments at all, but they're still messed up because they're ingrates. And you know what gratitude is? Gratitude is what gratitude does. What would gratitude? Wouldn't, how do you know the other nine didn't have gratitude? Simple. Jesus asked, where are they? Gratitude is like love, it's an action word. It produces certain things. The man wasn't being disobedient when Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. He, he intended to do that. But, but before I get there, see, the, the priest didn't heal me. The priest didn't do that. Jesus did that. Let me just go back and tell the one who did this for me. Thank you. Mother Turner, you'll always be on my list. I'm a bishop in the Church of God in Christ now. I'm a jurisdictional prelate. I've preached in Memphis. I got a letter right now from one of the leading mothers in our church who wrote me one of the kindest, dearest, Letters from one of the ruling families in the Church of God in Christ. Send a letter to yours truly. But mother, when I was an unlicensed minister, <laughs> driving my mama's 69 Chevrolet, you and your husband were there for me. How do you forget? My mama, I talked to her this morning. I'm a strong, strapping man now, but when I was a little boy, a baby, a week's neglect would have ended my life. She was there for me. I have, I, I have money now, but when I didn't have any, certain ones were there for me. Oh, Lord, you got to know how to be grateful. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to look back over your life, find those people.
people who was there for you when you couldn't do and tell them thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the devil come and try to separate you from the Lord, you ought to tell the devil, I was on my way to hell and Jesus saved my soul. I can't leave him and I'm not going to backslide because he's been too good to me. Do I have any worshipers in here? Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Help me. I just want I just want to take a little time and thank the Lord for all. Excuse me while I, I just want to, I want to take a time right now and thank the Lord for all he's done. There were ten men in the Bible days. They'd been sick for so very long. Jesus, one day Jesus, one day he passed that way and when he spoke that disease were healed that day then the men went on they went on their merry merry way but only one returned and said I've got something something I'd like to say, he said, I just want, I just want to take our time. Everybody who want to thank him, meet me at the altar. Thank you right now. Thank you. Pastor Reggie Barnes is coming. Pastor Barnes, I want you to come and lead us in a prayer of thanksgiving. Oh, Lord. Woo! 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 He said, Jesus, heal me. And I must go back. He made me whole and I must go back. Let me tell you something. Wholeness means he was fixed inside and out. Wholeness means he needed none of those ceremonies. Wholeness means he could go home and get started. He'd been home and got with his wife. If he was married, he touched his children, slept in his own bed days if not weeks ahead of time before the others did because they they were healed but they weren't whole and many of you in here today you're healed but you're not whole and what the Lord is offering today is wholeness and as this man of God prays put your heart in the prayer put your heart in the prayer you who are Facebook Live with us. Pray with us. Put your heart in the prayer. And if you pray, God will. God will send wholeness. Wholeness affects every aspect of your being. It's deliverance, spiritual, physical, financial, ceremonial, you name it. Wholeness affects everything. Preacher, you didn't know I was going to call you, but God did. I want you to pray. Wholeness. Thank you, Jesus.
Father God, we come today without reservation, without doubt. We come today convinced, beyond convincing, that you are God, and beside you there's none other. From the rising of the sun, God, to the setting of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. So today, Lord God, we say thank you. Thank you for another day's rising. Thank you, Lord, for our down settings. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our uprisings. Thank you for every hill and every mountain. Thank you for every valley low. Thank you for every way you've made. For God, you've been a good God. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Thank you, God, that on this day, while others are entertaining themselves, otherwise, we thank you that we're in the church house and not in the jail house. We thank you, Lord, that we're in the church house and not in the crazy house. We thank you, God, that we're in the church house and not in the crack house. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is worthy, worthy to be praised. It's because of your mercies we have not been consumed. You're worthy in the morning time, worthy in the noonday hour, worthy in the midnight hour, worthy when our bodies rack with pain, worthy when our money's short, where the Lord, when we talked about built and scorn, we find no fault. Find no fault. You've been a faithful God. And for that we say thank you. You've been a good God. For that we say thank you. You've been a patient God. For that we say thank you. You've been a merciful God. For that we say thank you. You've been a loving God. For that we say thank you. For your name is worthy. And if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Thank you for a man of God in the person of pastor and Bishop Wooden. Thank you, Lord, for what he's sown into my life. Lord, give him to know that every time he sees my face, it's just my way of saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 